There's so many good and interesting factoids to start with when talking about 1974's Deranged. Like do I start by mentioning this is yet another horror film based on the real life serial killer Ed Gein. Now we all know who Ed Gein is, but if you don't, he's a guy who dug up bodies of dead women who he thought looked like his mother and made a woman suit from their flesh so he could become his mother. You know, crawl into her skin if you will. Some of the most famous horror movies of all time are based on the butcher of Plainfield, Ed Gein, like 1960's Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, 1991's Silence of the Lambs, and of course 1974's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And Deranged is unique in that it came out the same year as The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, while also being a more faithful rendition of the real life crimes. It wasn't until the year 2000 where it was dethroned as being the most accurate depiction of Gein on film. The new honor belongs to the aptly titled Ed Gein. Hmm, that is interesting, but maybe I should have started with the fact that this was the first horror film showing the work of horror legend Tom Savini. Savini is no stranger to the Hellbound horror show, and his work has been adored by horror fans for decades. From Dawn of the Dead to Creepshow to Friday the 13th, Savini's work speaks for itself. Now we've already covered another early example of Savini's work with 1974's Death Dream, directed by Bob Clark from Black Christmas and A Christmas Story fame. Speaking of Bob Clark, he was asked to direct Deranged, but he turned it down due to its disturbing nature and instead co-produced it. So much fun information is packed inside this one and we haven't even watched it yet. This one's gonna be fun, so sit down, buckle up, and welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. Now I did say that Deranged is pretty accurate to the true events of Ed Gein, but some things like names and locations were changed. We start with a narrator taking the form of some sort of police reporter talking about the case of Ezra Cobb. Ezra is a middle-aged man taking care of his farm and his elderly mother. She's on her deathbed, but Ezra doesn't want to believe it. As the mother dies, she tells Ezra to be aware of women and their black souls who want to corrupt him. The mother's death is pretty great with Ezra trying to feed her and then blood spurts from her nose. This was a simple trick with a tube taped to the side of her face off camera. This was Tom Savini's first feature film as the lead special effects artist and little tricks like this go a long way. Well, they bury the mother and at the funeral, Ezra claims that she isn't dead. She's just sleeping. Ezra tries to live his life, but the thought of his mother haunts him. She speaks to him until one night, a year after she's been in the dirt, he decides to dig up her corpse. Now the real life Gein never actually dug up his mother, but the writers thought it would be creepier if he did. So Ezra expects to find his mother as he last saw her, but instead she has decayed beyond recognition. Ezra takes her home and takes care of her as if she was still alive. While at the neighbors, Ezra finds out about an old teacher of his who passed away. Ezra is confused why her picture is in the paper, but the father of the family explains that it's an obituary which shows when someone dies and where and when they are buried. Well, Ezra gets the bright idea to dig up the corpse and use the still fresh remains to help patch up his mother. All I got to do, stitch it on you. Grave digging just isn't enough for Ezra, and we eventually witness the attacks on his next three victims. The most interesting to me is the bar owner, Mary. Through some deception, Ezra is able to get Mary to drive along with him in his truck. He takes her all the way back to his place. He claims he'll run inside just for a moment to pick up some spare tires to help fix her flats, but he never returns. Mary goes into the house to check on him, and then we get a scene right out of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> Ezra is wearing the skin of a woman he's killed. He captures Mary and he takes her to dinner where all of his victims are set up around the dinner table. 
It's crazy to think that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out the same year. Although this dinner scene wasn't as intense as the one found in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's still the highlight of the film for me. It's one of the few moments where I was actively rooting for our character to survive. As you can imagine, this movie is very focused on Ezra and the deranged mind of a conflicted and mentally unstable killer. It's kind of groundbreaking in a way. Deranged walked, so movies like Maniac and Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer could run. Movies with a serial killer as the main character can be hard to watch, and while there were moments that worked for me, I was mostly unentertained. I thought the film had some great performances, with the highlight being Robert's Blossom as Ezra, but the pacing was a little bit all over the place. We switched from event to event with no real connective tissue. I thought the pulling from real life was the most interesting aspect. And for those who adore real life serial killers, you might find amusement in what is dramatization and what is fact. I don't know though. Depictions of real life serial killers like Netflix Dahmer just don't do it for me. There isn't a lot of music, so scenes feel really dry, but I guess that makes it more realistic. There's a sense of biopic going on, so in a way, that's pretty cool, but I wasn't entertained by it. Some gore was good, but you can tell there wasn't a lot of money behind the project, and Tom Savini was still far from the master that he would soon become. A lot of the bodies at the dinner table are actually made from dowels, chicken wire, and liquid latex. The faces were cast from loved ones from the production. It's cool, but a little bland and flimsy looking. Derange was thought to be lost for many years, but luckily there was a surviving print found in Florida in the 90s. VHS and DVD copies were made from that print, but most were the R-rated version, which was originally cut from the theatrical release. Some did have some deleted scenes, but the raw deleted scenes weren't fully restored until 2013's Arrow release. So if you want the full experience, you'll have to track down the Arrow or Kino Lorber Blu-rays. All in all, Deranged is an interesting film and is honestly more fun to talk about than it is to actually watch. There are some moments, but overall, this isn't an entertaining film. You may find it disturbing as a lot of this stuff actually happened, and you may even like the fact that it didn't take a lot of creative liberties. So if you're into the idea of an early messed up biopic about Ed Gein, then Deranged is for you. And that's all I have for tonight. So thank you so much for watching and stay spooky everyone. Thanks for watching until the end of the video. If you liked this video, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing or by buying me a coffee in the description below. What real life serial killer interests you the most? I'd love to know in the comments below. Thanks, bye.